Hello, it's just David here with my weekly uh, video message. Well, some rejoicing really. We're very pleased that um, there are all donations this coming Saturday, 2nd of July at the Cathedral. Um, obviously, it's been, because they're such big services, been a bit sort of problematic in the last couple of years. I mean, obviously, we have ordained people, but we've uh, had to sort of make slightly different arrangements. But we're kind of back to, to usual, as it were. So at 4 p.m. on Saturday, um, we will be ordaining deacons. I'm not quite sure of the number, probably sort of 15, 20. And two of them, Christy and Ryan Gilfellow, will be coming to the Welland team, which is uh, absolutely great. And um, just to say, firstly, a few practical things about that. Firstly, um, anybody can come to the cathedral. I mean, we're not sort of organising a, a coach or anything on this occasion, but, but if you want to come, do come and, and do kind of find Christy and Ryan afterwards and congratulate them. And then on uh, Sunday, the July 3rd, they'll be around various churches in the team. I think uh, probably Coddicott, Welland, and Warmer Green, I think. Uh, and then um, also we're... Well, they are sort of hosting a bring and share lunch, which is um, in their garden. Uh, so hopefully it'll be nice weather. If not, we'll move to Warmer Green Church, but otherwise um, do come to the garden. And um, we'll, we'll make sure there's sort of cutlery and glasses and tables there. If people can, you know, basically just bring a picnic, um, we will make sure there's a bit of place. Yeah, a bit of kind of, um, you don't have to bring everything. Um, if, if you can bring a chair, it'll help, but we'll bring a few. So um you know, if, if that's a bit of a struggle, then just bring some, you know, some food to eat and we will um, we'll sort that out. So that would be great to welcome them. And then practically, um, so in a way, sort of Ryan is the sort of bonus. Um, they're a married couple. They've trained at Ridley Hall, Cambridge and um, both finishing PhDs as well. So Christy is the one sort of receiving the stipend. So she'll work in, um, oh, it should be based in Warmer Green, so in a sense, particularly after she's priested, she'll spend, you know, a good, you know, in a sense, most of her time there, but also to get that sort of breadth of training, she'll be doing things around the team as well. Ryan, I say, is sort of the bonus, he, he isn't receiving a stipend, he's self-supporting minister, so he's got various academic projects that he wants to sort of uh, do, and, um, but he will be a, a deacon and a priest in due course uh, just like um, Christy so he will but he'll mainly help out at um, Codiga, um with Philip Waller. So that's kind of um, the practical bits of it but I thought I'd just talk a little bit about deacons so we're doing assembly actually and there's a school um, and um, the deacons I mean the word just means servant in Greek and um, so if you can cast your back to Christmas, St Stephen's Day, St Stephen, many people know the first martyr, Christian martyr. And so it's an Acts of the Apostles. And the story is basically the first Christian sort of shared things. I mean, we have a bring and share lunch. They, they seem to do that kind of quite regularly, if not all the time. They sort of lived in that communal way. And but, I mean, I trust it won't happen here. But the thing about <laughs> bring and share lunches is that you know, uh, some people, perhaps sort of younger, fitter people, were sort of pushing their way to the front and saying, right, fill my plate. And then um, others were having a slightly raw deal, particularly the widows who, you know, were the, so if you like, the weakest of the community. And so the widows said, well, actually, it's not fair. The whole point of bring and share is that everybody has uh, enough to eat. And actually, the, you know, it's working out the opposite. And the apostles say, well, you, you're quite right. We need to sort of marshal this a bit but um you know travis actually we apostles we're we're very busy we're you know preaching and teaching ministry and so they appoint seven deacons who are actually named in acts of the apostles um and the chief is stephen and then the next chapter goes on to sort of relate, uh, relate his martyrdom so you know these were sort of key people in the early church and so what we talk about in the Anglican Church, as in many other churches, Roman Catholic Church, Orthodox churches, for instance, is a, of a threefold order of ministry. So you're ordained as a as a deacon, uh, and sometimes then as a priest, and sometimes then as a bishop. And there's two things uh, to say about that. I mean, a they are sequential. Um, you have to be a deacon first, then a priest, 
um, and then some are made bishops. And also, um, as well as being uh, sequential, you can stop at any point. I mean, fairly obviously, not every priest is made a bishop, but also you can stop when you're a deacon. There are what are called permanent deacons, people who just feel a call to be a deacon and, and, uh, and not go on to be priests. So for Church of England clergy, the, the vast majority though, are sort of deacons for a year and then are ordained again next year, next Peter Tide. Again, we'll go to the cathedral and they'll be ordained as a priest. Um, and just to say, it doesn't sort of um, override. I think this is one of the things I get slightly concerned about when we sort of we have the renewal of vows on Monday, Thursday. I mean, you, you might be a priest, but you're, you're still a deacon. I mean, it used to be the way the bishops used to wear three sets of robes on top of one another. It must have been very sort of cumbersome. But the idea was to remind them that, you know, you might have a sort of, you know, the, the splendid robes of bishop, but actually underneath you were a deacon. Um, and so I just wanted to think a little bit about um, deacon and that idea of servant. So when we put a, a towel, well, the most obvious way you'll see this is when you put the stole round their neck, the sort of, the sort of coloured scarf that we wear, the deacon wears it tied to the side. And that's because really it's supposed to model one of these, my visual aid, my towel. Um, because that's exactly what it was. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Jesus washes the feet and you had a towel, that's, you know, exactly what was meant in the early Christian service by community. You had a towel or a tea towel ready, you know, you were the, in the sort of those communal meals, you shared the food, you did the washing up, you did the work of a servant. So although they're kind of quite nice brocade things, they are tied round that way as a, um, as a towel. Uh, and that's the, the symbolism of that, which obviously, you know, it's not obvious uh, looking at it. I did want to think a little bit about that sort of, because it, it, it sounds marvellous and, it, and it's right. And, you know, it, it is that, you know, deacons uh, and indeed priests and, you know, are, come to serve just as Jesus himself served. You know, of course, you know, I, I come a one, I come amongst you as one who serves, uh, says Jesus. So that, and you know, idea of service is very much at the heart of a deacon's ministry. I think there is sort of, and this goes right up to, you know, priests and bishops as well, that there is one sort of problem with that. Um, without taking anything away from the fact that they are servants and they are here to serve. Um, of course, when they go to congregations, they do, however, sort of go with authority. And that's slightly tricky because, you know, if you take it right up to the bishop level, it's quite difficult because on one hand, yes, the bishop is the servant, you know, and I mean, Pope Gregory even called himself the, you know, as the Pope, the servant of the servants of God. So a kind of uber servant, if you like. But of course, if you're a servant, you're not expected to be in charge. But actually, you are expected to exercise authority and leadership within the church as, I say, as a bishop or a priest, or indeed as a deacon. And I think, you know, the, the church can get it wrong both ways. I mean, sometimes, you know, the Pope um, and, you know, bishops, etc. have certainly not acted like servants they've acted as sort of you know lords and masters of all they survey really and have been very sort of pompous and um you know often you know cruel and outrageous in their behavior really um but on the other hand you know that dare i say i mean sometimes uh, and you know this happens perhaps more in congregational churches where you know the the, the minister is indeed hired elected selected by the congregation um where, you know, that there is a feeling that, you know, well, we pay your wages, you're the hired help, you'll do what I say. And I mean, certainly there are churches and congregations that are a bit like that. And so it doesn't tend to happen in Anglican churches because congregations don't sort of elect their, you know, choose their ministers directly. I mean, they have a say in it and quite a big say, and that's quite right. But that's the point of it. It's not entirely down to them. Um, and I think that's right, there's a balance, because I say otherwise, you know, I mean, say there are lots of churches that just, you know, hire their minister in, in the way that, you know, they would hire, you know, anybody to do a job. And the trouble is that, and, and I say it sometimes works out fine, it's, you know, people have give and take, but, you know, 
if you're a minister in that situation, in those sorts of denominations, there slightly is this feeling, well, you're, you're hired hat, help, we pay your wages, you do what we say. And so it's difficult to then sort of have authority and leadership on that basis, because obviously if you say, well, actually, I need to say something quite difficult to you or something I really think is going wrong here, then they're liable to say, well, you know, cheerio. So it's a tricky one. So, I mean, and I'm sure it'll be fine here. As I say, we don't operate on that model in the Anglican Church. We, again, we have this sort of middle way and a balanced way. So, you know, Christian and Ryan come to you as servants. But actually, yeah, we must make sure that as, you know, congregation, we, we don't we treat them like hired help. You know, they, they come here with authority, with, you know, training and knowledge and, yeah, and the authority of the bishop to preach. And that includes sometimes, you know, saying hard things. Now, obviously, we try not to kind of in first post get people to expose to those difficult situations. But, you know, we know that, yeah, further on in ministry, you do have to sometimes have difficult conversations. And, um, and there's a bit of that for them. So, yeah, they, as I say, they have the bishop's authority to preach and to, to talk to. So, I mean, yeah, we, we, we listen and uh, they serve. Um, and um, I know we will welcome them and we will listen to them. And we've you know, got great sort of track record of doing that. So that's really good. But I just thought I'd talk about that little, you know, that thing about being both a servant and being a leader and actually how in practice that works out and how, you know, it might seem very obvious and it trips off the tongue, you know, servant leadership or, you know, servants with authority. But just recognising that just sometimes that needs a little bit of thought, a little bit of negotiation to see how it works. So very happy weekend. Be great to welcome them. And um, yeah, um, get to know them. Very exciting.